Well, chat, this one is absolutely ridiculous. Just insane, but this is the most fun that I've had in a long time, ordering random stuff from China. Oh boy, I'm having fun with AliExpress again. This is the box that you get. It's 13th gen. Okay, it's gonna be a processor, right? I promise you, this isn't like a processor you've seen before. I hold in my hand a mobile HX processor, but soldered onto this BGA processor is an LGA adapter. What? A notebook processor was never meant to be used in a desktop motherboard like our Pro Z690A DDR4, and yet, and yet, that is exactly how far we've come. Or, I like the full circle. Mm. I mean, this is a notebook CPU. It's designed for a notebook. Notebook, it, they don't have sockets. It gets soldered. But soldered to this is an adapter to be able to use it in an LGA socket. But you won't be able to use it in an ordinary LGA socket. You must also have a mounting bracket. And conveniently enough, there's a seller on AliExpress that's making these. And the price on these processors at the time that I'm making this video is a steal. Now that might change if a thousand of you show up to just buy these. The processors that are there now are the 13950HX and the 13850HX. It's a 5.0 gigahertz and a 4.8 gigahertz variant, basically. But yes, 24 cores, 32 threads, P cores, overclockable. There are some quirks because it is a notebook processor. One of the biggest quirks is DDR5 motherboards that have four DIMM slots are very strongly not recommended. You probably are not going to be able to get DDR5 posts in that scenario. But I have a variety of DDR4 machines, including very affordable the H610M motherboard, as well as a desk mini. And this is direct die cooling, so if you are interested in overclocking, this is going to overclock like a champ. Now, these are mobile CPUs that come from the same dies as desktops. There is the whole degradation thing that might be happening, but if you use these with new microcode, then theoretically that won't happen. I don't know, and that's part of the testing that I'm going to do on these, but I just got these, and so we won't know for three to six months, probably. It's like, oh yeah, it turns out if you run a Minecraft server on these, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But for now, let's take a closer look at these and see what we get. All right, so first up, if you order one of these, it doesn't necessarily come with the mounting bracket, and it does need a special mounting bracket. You can see there's a small cutout here that is for the die. And so this is, again, for direct die cooling. And the mounting pressure depends entirely on the mounting screws for your mounting plate. The cooling uh, clearances are a little different, and so some coolers will not put enough pressure on the die as others, that's a thing that, that we will get to. But look at this, look at the CPU, look at the edges of this. You can see the little solder BGA balls in this. <laughs> I love it when technology is not used in the way that it is intended, and you can get a really good deal for something that runs really well. A low power-ish notebook CPU running in something like the Desk Mini, but it's still socketed and replaceable and upgradable. I'm going to be upgrading from the 12th gen CPU that's in this. This thing has been running continuously since forever. We're going to replace it with a 13th gen because it's a small, compact design. I don't need overclocking. I'm not going to push the envelope. It's fine. It's totally fine. But if you do want to push the envelope and do some overclocking, I'm going to try it in a Z690 motherboard as well. This is a DDR4 Z690 motherboard, so it has four slots. We'll see how that goes. But if you're going to go DDR5, you probably should do two slots. And everything is PCIe 4 across the board, X16 slot at PCIe Gen 4, and your Gen 4 NVMe. So in the box, you get the BGA processor, the BGA to LGA adapter processor pre-soldered. You get some handy-dandy mounting screws, because I also ordered the mounting plate. And then you've got a cover. Now, they're working on a version where they have a built-in IHS. If you wanted to use it, uh, you know, in a standard motherboard... Maybe that would be an option someday, but if there's no cost, you just get a direct die cooler and you get, you know, the little aluminum mounting plate, just go for the mounting plate. The mounting plate is going to be better than the retention mechanism anyway. The retention mechanism has never been fabulous, so don't, you know, whenever they get that up on AliExpress, I would, I'd say don't bother with it. These CPUs are also, I mean, they're, there's, there's no way around it. They're, they're sketched. They're, they're engineering samples or they're, you know, notebook CPUs repurposed. This is coloring outside the lines, but, you know, in chasing a deal, save hundreds of dollars on a machine to experiment and just have, and 
I, you know, I did stuff like this in college and the, you know, whole computer science department would, would end up with, uh, <laughs> machines that I put together that were never supposed to run the way that they did. And so it's fun. There's less and less and less opportunity for that. Like when people, enough people notice like, Hey, here's a way that I can get the same performance and save a whole bunch of money. Uh, those pathways tend to be closed after a time. And so it's always fun when new pathways pop up that are like that. Also in the package, you get this handy dandy screwdriver for unscrewing the mounting situation on LGA 1700. Now this is the most dangerous part of this operation because you don't want any screws or debris to fall into your socket. If, if literally anything falls in the socket, you've probably ruined the motherboard. Don't even transit over the motherboard when you remove those. Just, just don't do it. That's what the motherboard looks like with the retention mechanism removed and then you've got this little, this little bracket on the back for holding the screws. These even come with a little piece of protective tape installed on the CPU. It's magic. So basically you use the orange screwdriver to remove the socket and the black screwdriver to use your own mounting screws. Now I thought that the plastic washers would be useful for spacing out so you don't dig into the motherboard potentially with the mounting bracket, but that doesn't put enough pressure on the CPU. So I uh, didn't use them. I think now is probably the time that you would actually take off that protective piece of captain tape and not before because you don't want to scratch the die. This is literally the naked transistors, the stack of naked transistors that are actually doing the computation. This is the, the actual CPU. So when you open the box, in the box you have this metal IHS, but it's not integrated, it's separate. And there are screws in the box. What the screws are for is if you have your LGA 1700 cover like this, you can unscrew it, take the screws out, and use the longer screws that are in the box with the plastic spacers, which gives this a little bit more height. Because you might notice the edge of these things is pretty thick. And the reason the edge of these things is pretty thick is because it's a laptop CPU soldered to an adapter to make it go into LGA 1700, so it's a little thicker. It's not going to work with the built-in IHS. Like, you can't just snap it down. It's not, it's going to break something. So you can't use this as is. The screws in here fit this socket more precisely the back plate so that you can have a slightly different setup. Now that does make your CPU a little taller when you use the IHS and so you have to be sure that your cooling solution supports a slightly higher CPU. Generally AIO coolers will do that but if you've got a cooler like you know your Noctua LGA 1700 uh, it, it's pushing it a little bit because the the threads don't quite want to catch on the edge of this. Taller standoffs, like you would have with an AIO, generally work, so cooler compatibility suffers a little bit there. The other option is the mounting frame. The mounting frame doesn't use the screws from the box. Don't be tempted to use the screws or the washers or anything like that from the box. If you get the mounting frame, you will use only the orange screwdriver and you will reuse the screws that came from the socket with your CPU when you're mounting it. And that's it. And that's the magic. And I found that actually worked better. In that scenario, you are basically doing direct die cooling with what is essentially a desktop class CPU. Now, if we look at our Hardware Info 64 capture here, we can see that our voltage requests from Hardware Info 64 are going up to like 1.4 volts and change. This is a 5.0 gigahertz processor out of the box or a 4.8 gigahertz processor out of the box, which is kind of wild because, you know, HX CPUs. But uh, there's a lot of interesting things that this opens up in terms of possibilities. Uh, spoiler alert, as soon as I said BGA to LGA adapter, uh, someone inside of Intel was nervously calling somebody else because they said, wait a minute, you know, we're saying that our laptop chips don't have the degradation problem and here's some crazy randos are uh, soldering laptop chips to BGA carriers in order to test them. Does that also mean that they'll be able to desolder laptop CPUs that may be failing them, solder them to an adapter board, and then do diagnostics in a desktop motherboard? And I say yes, as they chuckle nervously into the phone. Anyway, Steve, call me. <laughs> no, just kidding. We're already talking. Anyway, we're... <laughs> <laughs> Nervous laughter. Now when you're testing it for the first time, I recommend making absolutely sure your cooling is secured and starting with one dim at a time. Oh.
Okay, wow, what a fascinating adventure. If you decide to embark on this, remember, these are basically engineering sample CPUs. So, like, this isn't... The price should make sense versus, you know, a traditional retail CPU or one that you would buy off of eBay secondhand market, as in very, very aggressively priced, because there are some downsides. But it is fun if you have a relatively low cost motherboard like this H610M, which you can't actually run overclocked DDR4 memory, and it is only two slots, which works out best. And this board only supports up to DDR4 3200. Theoretically, these CPUs should work with DDR4 4000. For this to make sense, these CPUs have to be insanely dirt cheap. But you should know, I tested them in W680. Worked fine. I tested them in the ASRock H610M. This is a particularly good choice for this. Worked fine. Tested it in the, the desk meat, the big old desk meat adding a GPU. Worked fine. Our performance was basically about where you'd expect from a desktop class CPU. With our plucky little tower cooler here, it's, it's not really going to do it. The out-of-the-box wattage configuration for these is also 55 watts for PL1 and 125 watts for PL2. And so for something like your desk meet, this can make a lot more sense than a normal desktop class CPU because the laptop class CPUs need less power to perform well. They're, they're bend for that, which incidentally is why they have a lower probably failure rate than their desktop counterparts. It's going to be on the order of like the i5 or maybe even better than the i5 because they're generally bend better to require less power. And there's some other inside baseball that I know that suggests that laptop CPUs may not suffer from the same bugs that lead to uh, degradation as their desktop counterparts, but that'll be a video for a future day. 55 watts is a lot easier to manage. Now that, is, that said, that doesn't mean you can't overclock them. If you use this in a board like a Z690 or Z790, you absolutely can't overclock them. They are not locked. So if you wanted to dump 200 watts and have direct die cooling, that is an option. And so if you are an overclocker and you're chasing records and you don't care about dumping too much voltage into your CPU. This seems like a no fuss, no must way to have a lot of power dumped into your CPU. The caveats about the memory still remain though. Really, these CPUs are gonna be problematic in DDR5 motherboards that have four slots. Even if you don't intend to use four slots, you really need a DDR5 motherboard that only has two slots. For DDR4, in my testing, Two slots or four slots didn't really matter as long as you only used two slots. It's, it's a little sketchy having all four DDR4 DIMMs. But that was true of even Alder Lake. Using all four DIMMs on Alder Lake tended to be a little sketchy. And the setup here also, DDR4 4000 is something the uh, person selling these CPUs says is okay. I didn't, it was not super okay in the systems that I tested it in. I could get it to work with some fiddling, but it wouldn't necessarily work out of the box. So if you're going to embark on this, I recommend configuring one DIM, getting that one DIM working, and then add your second DIM. And that's probably going to be a little bit uh, of an easier process to get it all working for you. These do have full support for PCIe 4.0 x16 graphics, much to my surprise. And you get one PCIe 4.0 x4 direct for the M.2. That is all Gen 4, and that all worked pretty well. Another potentially exciting side feature of these CPUs is that if you disable all your e-cores, you do actually get AVX 512. These are 13th gen. They don't seem to be uh, CPUs that have the AVX 512 functionality fused off. So if you really needed 8P cores of AVX 512 for some uh, unruly experiment that you have going, like does the CPU destroy itself even quicker under AVX 512 workloads and nobody noticed that before, then these are great CPUs for testing that. Huh. If you do decide to opt for the uh, 13850, don't forget that is 20 core. It's 8 plus 4 E cores plus 8 P cores versus 16 and 8 for the higher end model that will also clock a little higher. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. And, I, you know, in my mind, one of your, your best options is something like the desk meet, which comes with a modest power supply and a modest motherboard. <laughs> I mean, it's a bare bones kit. You just add a CPU to it and a low profile cooler. And that is a pretty solid system for not a lot of money. Now, as I do the video on this, the price of these CPUs may fluctuate a lot. I, I don't know. Just in the back of your mind, look at the used market for like an i7 versus this. It has to be priced really aggressively for it to make sense. And it also has to be like a side fun project for you or something that you're, you know, <laughs> don't make this your main computer. Like this is 
I, I don't really know how to explain it, but you're you're taking laptop chips that are soldered onto a carrier, which it just so happens to work. And it, it's exciting because these parts were never intended to work this way. And there is something amazing about getting parts that were never designed to work this way to work this way. It's incredible. I love it. But, you know, caveat emptor and all that. I'm World List Level 1. This has been a quick look at 10729 13th Gen Unlocked CPUs. You can get them on AliExpress. That seemed to actually go according to plan. If you're a little less adventurous, this is also available in a super inexpensive motherboard uh, variants. And by super inexpensive motherboard, I mean, did they figure out a way to do this in just four PCB layers? This thing is as thin as a sheet of paper. It's soldered. There's no socket. Two dim slots. DDR4. And that's, yeah, that's going to be in another video. There's not a lot of, there's like six... USB ports back here and two of them are USB 2.0 there's not oh, this is going to be another video alright I'm signing out you can find me in the level 1 forums if you want to take this for a spin or let me know or whatever this is this is like a 6 plus 1 plus 1 VRM this is definitely in that you know 150 watt country Ugh. well you know I'm one of those level 1 I'm signing out you can find me in the level 1 forums let's dance and by dance, I mean build computers out of things that would have ended up as e-waste. But this is much more useful than e-waste. This is actually legit bananas. I mean, this, this thing is maxing out a 4090.